Since the fall of man, a war has raged between good and evil. Over the centuries, this war has distorted the truth. Now the truth is perceived as lies, and lies acknowledged as truth. To this day, the battle continues as we investigate and debate the truth behind the history and mystery of the universe. We are Paratruth Radio. When listening to online radio, it usually seems professional, and it is. However, it sometimes takes a while to get it there. Unfortunately, it may take us several takes before we pronounce something clearly, or even develop a complete thought. So, what happens with the content in which we stumble? Well, for Paratruth, it gets stored in a secret file. Now Paratree presents The Parabloopers The Parabloopers The Parabloopers <laughs> Now Paratree presents The Parabloopers Hey Para fans, welcome to Paratruth Radio. My name is Justin and I'm Eric. And today we have bloopers. But before we get started with that, Eric, how's the week been for you, man? The week has been rough. It's been rough. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> I've got one week of work left before going back to school, so uh, I'm kind of excited for that because, I, honestly, I can't wait to get out of work. <laughs> I, I think we all can't wait to get out of work. <laughs> uh, Only difference is, is you get to leave and go to school, which is kind of like work, so it kind of has that vicious cycle. Yeah, but at least it's fun for me. Yeah. You know, doing all the film stuff and yep. you know all that good stuff. Not what I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and once you get back, um, you start preparing for starting to film, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, pretty much start as soon as I get back. I still got to find uh, a second main actor, which is the male actor, the only male actor uh, in the story, as well as three or four uh uh, I guess extras, if you will, to play the <clears throat> the extraterrestrial beings uh, that will be in the story. Gotcha. Oh, as well, actually, I have two uh, male actors, but the one's not like a main actor. He's just the, the not just, but he's the pastor at the beginning of the movie. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I got a few a few actors I got to find, and then just locations, pretty much two locations that I need to hunt down and hopefully. Hopefully fine without too much problem. Yeah. But we'll see. But uh I'm not yeah. much of an actor, otherwise I would I would totally be in it. But Oh that, <laughs> yeah. See that'd be nice. I, I wish there was like a guy in the family that can act. <laughs> and I'd be like, Okay, cool. So I'm gotta worry about going out and doing the auditions because auditions just take right. up a lot of time. Yeah. It's not a bad thing to have auditions. It's actually really good because at least you get to see what the actor's performing and how they're performing. So you're not just picking some random person. And I've done that in the past. It's not a good idea. Right. Um, well, you know, I mean, just look at and for folks out there that are new listeners and even our old listeners, I don't think we ever ever talked about it. Uh, I did play a role in one of Eric's first films <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of like uh our s files episode um or our s files because night suckers files uh it it wasn't good <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah well it, uh, let me give a quick uh small kind of a synopsis or summary of that story considering it was like what five minutes long or so uh roughly <laughs> <clears throat> so Basically, it was like Fight Club, which meets people who don't know how to fight. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> you know, no, actually, we both knew how to fight at the time. We both still do. Yeah. Because then I was taught you some stuff. Yeah. And plus, we used to take the kung fu together. Yep. We used to do kung fu, kung fu yep. for a while. I uh, kind of miss doing that. Yeah. Um, actually, folks, so you know, Justin and I, we had some skills in fighting. <laughs> that, that was just a joke before. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the whole thing was filmed in my basement on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, it was oh shot with a Canon XL2, I believe it was. By far one of the cheapest production cameras you can find. It's usually a, a type of camera that's built for, uh, I guess, basically filming events, whether it be weddings or graduations or maybe certain church events, which nowadays churches are using pretty good HD cameras. Yeah, I was going to say high quality. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, it was pretty cheap. Had some bad lighting because the school I was going to for that film stuff back then. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Wasn't very good at teaching that stuff. But <laughs> it, was a, it was a community college. So, guys, yeah. it was like the basic of the basic. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, it gave me some experience. It got me to understand a little bit of how to move a camera a little bit. So, but it was cool. And it was just a fun, fun video. In fact, it was such a fun video. Maybe, maybe... In two weeks, when I get back down to Virginia, I'll even post that under the uh, Paratruth Facebook page. What do you think, Justin? I think it sounds good. Give people yeah. a perspective of what you did do before compared yeah. to what you will be doing with the reveal. I'll tell you what, folks. I'm going to do... Do you still have your things. demons one, too? I do. I am going to post three videos onto the parachute and maybe four but i'll probably do at least three videos i'm going to post onto the parachute facebook page the first one will be the fight one i can't it might i can't remember what it's called it might be fight i don't know i can't remember either um so we'll do that one i'll also post my demons that's another short movie that i made simply it was completely created with snapshots but each snapshot links together to make it look like a moving picture. Uh, Which I thought was really, really well done, by the way. Thank you, thank you. And that, that's actually one I have a lot of pride in. And it's not the best, because that was one of my very first films I'd ever made. But for what it is, I thought it personally turned out really good. I like it. Right. But, but it also gives everyone a little bit of an idea, slightly, as to the, the, the three months of oppression and affliction that I went through. And just kind of giving you that same feeling i guess if you will the struggle and that it is to be in demonic warfare again right yeah oh yeah that was pretty much just during or right after those three months of oppression that i went through okay. and i think you and i started doing the show the original show night stalkers probably about a month i don't know probably right around the third month that i was in the whole thing oh yeah and then we ended up getting saved probably about six months later. Right. But, uh, so I'll post those two. And then the last one I'll post is a movie that I did this past year, a short film. Uh, what is it called? It's called, uh, <clears throat> I don't remember the title. You know what I'm talking about though, right? Yeah. The one that you wrote, right? The, well, yeah, I wrote quite a few. There's uh well, the one that got accepted for your class. <laughs> <laughs> that I, um, I I really liked, and the the one that you had done, I don't even remember if it was the camera yeah. or the lighting, but that one. I, really I, yeah, it. I did the camera work. I did the camera work on that one, and I can't remember why I can't remember what it's called at the moment. I'll remember later in the show, but uh, it's a story that kind of puts a spin on a modern day Moses meets the apocalypse. So. <clears throat> That was a pretty interesting, did some color grading on that one. Uh, I thought it turned out pretty good. The, the audio, there's one point in the audio where it kind of cuts out, and that's due to a an issue that we had in the location. We couldn't really use the mic the way we wanted to. And so at one point, our, uh, our audio guy had to pull the mic away from a telephone pole to get around the telephone pole and bring it back in. So we lose a little bit of audio towards the middle of the movie, but... The rest are not really good. And, of course, you'll at the end, there's credits, so you can see what I did in those movies and so on and so forth and who helped out. And maybe the fourth one I'll do is my commercial that I shot for Liberty University. Oh. Do you still have the one of you starting out with the green screen in the boxing ring? 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that, that yes I do. Uh, green screen is not my forte, no. but again, I have yet to be like personally trained on the green screen for uh, at the school that I'm at right now. Oh, really? Okay. But the one that I did originally was at the community college, and that one was just like. <laughs> I didn't know what the heck I was doing. It looked terrible. Let's face it. And actually, that that green screen is in the fight movie that Justin and I did. It was it was mandatory that I put the green screen shot into that movie for a grade. Oh, that's right. And so it's completely random. There's a uh, a training sequence that I go through. And it's very repetitive <laughs> until the very end where you see this boxing sequence. But um, yeah, everyone will see it in a couple of weeks. I'll post it. We'll make sure it gets out there so everyone can see it uh, on Facebook. We'll have to put it in the Creative Works tab of, of the show <laughs> page too. Yeah, everyone's gonna see it. And be like, oh, I'm not supporting the field. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, just to give you guys a heads up, it's not the best. At least the one that I'm in. The one <laughs> my demons was really good. Uh, the one that Eric wrote and did the camera work on was phenomenal. I would love to see a a full length movie on it. So uh, definitely stay tuned for those. As well as you know, Eric, like he just said when we first started, he's going back to school. Shooting the revealed starts uh, end of September. Correct. Yep, September 22nd, and we'll be filming all the way till October 1st. So we got about 10 days. All right, so a lot of great stuff coming up here for you guys. Uh, this week is Bloopers Week. Uh, we do a, a lot of recording, guys, and uh, unfortunately, it's not always as perfect as we try to make it out to be. Uh, so the first. Uh, the first clip that I'm going to play for you guys, and just by the way, guys, if there's any bloopers in this episode, they're staying in this episode. Uh, the first blooper I'm going to play is actually from a more recent show with Kay Carswell from the Deception Detection radio show, and we were doing an episode on Thunderbirds. So I'm going to play that clip, and me and Eric are going to kind of laugh and pick it apart a little bit. Mm-hmm. Break. Folks, you are listening to Paratruth Radio with Kay from the Deception Detection. So, bleh. okay, let's redo that. <laughs> I meant to download that and I forgot. Fail. <laughs> okay, you guys good? Yep. I'm good. And see what you guys have done to me now. I'm rabbit trailing. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, now you won't get out of the habit of it, and it'll just be every show you're rabbit trailing like we always do. <clears throat> you're welcome, and, Kay. <laughs> yes, thank you. And when we're off the radio, I call that Amtracking, Amtraxing. <laughs> like the road tracks that go in different directions. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I like rabbit hole better. I need to cough, so give me one second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Uh, here's the way about a <laughs> and that will be on the bloopers track all right all right my cough your cough and then the houston we have a problem oh <laughs> all right we'll go back into it all right yep. <laughs> sorry i gotta crack everything real quick feeling tight Oy. <clears throat> All right, everyone good? Yep. Yep. All righty. All right, and that's the end of that first <laughs> blooper. Uh, I you guys know, didn't know Eric was cracking his joints because he's an old man. So. I do that a lot <laughs> during the show, actually. I do it a lot, and I don't even notice it. And I don't know, you might... Or just a little bit ago when you're doing the show, or obviously we're doing the show now. <laughs> Jeez, when we were doing the show before. <laughs> just like. <laughs> Bloop, blooper, blooper, blooper. Uh, oh, all right, folks. Hold on, back up. Let's, let's scoop that bloop. <laughs> Put that over there. <laughs> Put that in the blooper bag. <laughs> I think we're going to be scooping a lot of bloop. Let's scoop all the bloop and put it in the bloop bag. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't notice it until after I do it, but sometimes I drink a glass of water as we're talking and I actually sip the water. So you get one of these. (laughs) 
and I put it down and I'm like, wait a second, I'm on air. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Justin, if you ever had to cut those out. I'm um, sure I did that earlier today and I just did it now. So actually, I think it is where I can't cut most of them out, but it doesn't really sound like you're slurping. It just Good. sounds like you're <laughs> swallowing your drink before you're trying to talk. Good. Good. <laughs> I gotta say, in regards to playing that last blooper with Kay, um, <clears throat> you know, it's funny when it happens, but going back and listening to it again now, it, it's... It's really even more funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I know she's going to kill me for including her cough. <laughs> I mean, you told her it was going to be in there. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> sorry, Kay. Yeah, sorry. Not really, because it's on the blooper track. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, fun episode. Kay is definitely an amazing uh uh, podcaster and uh, broadcaster and mm-hmm. uh, we love doing shows with her actually next week uh, you guys we will be doing a show with her on ghost towns and uh, believe it or not there's actually a lot of ghost towns here in North Dakota M- most of them don't have the loom and gloom uh, stories as a lot of a lot of ghost towns do like Helltown in Ohio and right. uh, there's Believe it or not, I had come across a bunch of overseas ones as well that actually do have some pretty amazing uh, and sad stories. So when uh, when that goes live, we will let you guys know. We will have a link for you, all that great stuff. Yeah. So, um, but there's a lot of, you know, and I did some research. I didn't do anything for North Dakota, but obviously, uh, of course, I looked in a hell town uh, because for probably nobody really knows. But uh, we, we've talked about hell town in the past. Yeah. And one of our episodes, and I'm not going to get into too much here because obviously it's going to it's for K's show this time around, right. so keeping things quiet. But <clears throat> I live very close to Helltown, only about maybe a 15 minute drive or so. Uh, Justin used to live about the same distance because Justin and I lived really close to each other right. uh, when he was out here in Cleveland. And I'll tell you what, I did some research, and not only am I impressed by all the different legends behind Helltown. But I am surprised at the truth behind Helltown and why it is the way it is, or why we have the stories that we have, I should say. <clears throat> so, for people who are interested and intrigued right now, you're going to want to tune in for that, for our episode on deception and detection. We'll let you know, as Justin just said. I repeat everything Justin says sometimes, if and you haven't I noticed that. I repeat everything that Eric says sometimes, if you ever notice that. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, and it, it, I've been to a couple of the ghost towns here in North Dakota. Me and Eric kind of sort of drove through Helltown, and I believe Ellie went to Helltown with you or <clears throat> by yourself. Uh, I've gone by myself several times. I actually I was just out there about two weeks ago, and Ellie's been out there herself. I've been out there with her, and Aaron's been out there with some friends. <clears throat> and, of course, there's a number of different... <sighs> Uh, stories that have come back from those trips. Uh, now, I've never come back with anything in particular. Obviously, it's a weird, creepy place, especially when you have the the stories in your mind. Right. About, you know. But uh, Aaron came back with an interesting story about tiny handprints on our cars, on her car. I don't know if it was on all the cars, but there are a couple cars out there. Oh, okay. And, uh, you, you know, it, it. there were no kids around. Obviously, they're were, they were at, like, I guess ghostly handprints you know there's no explanation for it now whether or not those are legit it's very possible that they're just fingerprints right and they happen to look like kid prints you know so i don't know but <clears throat> based on some of the creepy information that there is sur- surrounding Helltown and some of the things that have happened which are legit and i have stories for those as well which i'll talk about it's just kind of it's almost a conspiracy actually Hmm. I'll put it that way. I'll leave it at that. I look forward to uh, discussing these things with you and Kay then. Cool. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was I'm sure there's a reason we were talking that way. I was trying to go for a James Kirk kind of a feel. Feel. <laughs> we could try. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> um, and here's a dedication to... Heidi, because she had brought it up on her show last week on Talk Supernatural. 
Anyways. Uh, yep. I was not dancing to that again. <laughs> yes, you were, you liar. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, my heart broke a little once it turned off, but <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. All right, uh, folks, we are coming up to our first break. So we have Eric's random fact of the day, and we will be right back with Paratruth Radio. Mansfield Penitentiary is considered one of the most haunted locations in the United States of America. Thousands, if not millions of people flock there every single year with the hopes of catching a glimpse at a ghost. However, there are other places even more haunted. One such place is Poveglia. It's an island near Italy that was the site of wars, a dumping ground for plague victims, and even had an insane asylum. According to OhMyGodFactsOnline.com, it's so dangerously haunted that the Italian government doesn't even allow public access. This was Eric's Rainbow. Alright folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name's Justin. And I'm Eric. And we have been having our bloopers track this week. So for those of you that enjoy the show, I hope you guys enjoy our bloopers tracks because it's kind of hard to convey how much we go through in a week to get the show done. Um, Oh yeah. So uh, the first one that you guys heard was the Thunderbirds, where we were talking to Kay from uh, Deception Detection Radio. And oddly enough, after playing that blooper, I'm not getting it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's it's kind of interesting for you guys to, to hear these. Uh. Oh, no, all of my USBs are taken. Okay, uh, so I'm going to play you guys the next one here. It is from the Antichrist episode. and um, it's, This should be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little interesting, to say the least. So I just want, real quick, I'm sorry, I want to tell everyone that I, I'm with you guys. I don't know exactly what bloopers he's playing until he <laughs> plays them. So I'm with everyone else. I'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing what... I'm kind of scared, but interested. <laughs> <laughs> You'll like it. You'll like it. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. All right. And we're recording. All right. What's up, recording? <laughs> It says hello. Oh. And that it's happy that it could augment your voice for you. <laughs> this is going to be a difficult uh, topic, man. There's yeah. some stuff I just don't know the answer to. Well, I mean, we can just go over, you know, the biblical verses and, yeah. um, you know, our opinions on it. And yeah. even, like, trying to look it up, yeah, I, I mean, yes, I know some of the scripture um, and I know what the Bible says about the Antichrist, but like, how do you go into the actual subject, you know, without, without even like for non-believers, how do you <laughs> explain right. to them what this is? Yeah. Um, well, I have the seven heads of the Antichrist, the what they represent as lo- as well as the ten horns um, of the first beast. I mean, not the Antichrist, but of the first beast. Okay. Um, and then 
and that starts at the beginning of uh, tribulation, chapter, right? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, chapter thirteen. So that's John is standing on the shore and he sees a beast coming out of the water. Oh, okay. Uh, and that's the first beast that's uh, most commonly referred to as the Antichrist. But it mostly seems to be the kingdom of the Antichrist as opposed to the Antichrist himself. Right, because I was reading that he reads he mentions several beasts and each one is supposed to represent yeah a, a kingdom or whatever yeah and so we could t- we can actually share that passage of that particular you know yeah and i mean worst case scenario we can just kind of break down the scripture and all that too instead of kind of trying to explain what the antichrist is because you can say what the antichrist is and then that's the explanation <laughs> that's it right. so <laughs> Um, um, so we'll do that, and then of course we'll discuss a little bit of the second beast, which I didn't do as much research on, but it's pretty simple. Oh, okay. Because it just the Bible just tells us he's basically, you know, the representation of Jesus. He performs miracles. He leads people to believe that he is their savior, mm-hmm. uh, and he leads them to believe that the first beast is God, um, and that they should worship him and build images in his name, and so on and so forth. So. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead and read the intro again. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And that was the Antichrist. Hmm. Not so much real blooper, per se. Like, it is, but the, what, I was expecting funny well, on that one. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of funny for that episode or for the hell episode. That was a pretty serious episode. The one thing, now there were a couple things I caught as you were talking. One thing I had mentioned, folks, as I'm sure some of you out there had noticed, I said that the uh, the second beast or the false prophet, if you will, was a representation of Christ. I should have said misrepresentation of Christ. But I was talking <laughs> to Justin and he knows what I... He, I speak in another language and I talk to Justin and he knows everything that I say. I can say big pasitapo and he knows what that means. So it's it's Eric talk for he's an idiot. Very well done. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, and uh, if you guys didn't notice in the background, there was a lawnmower going the entire time we were recording that episode. So, uh, you know, we should have like a, a where's Waddo on our <laughs> during our shows, because every episode, folks, you'll hear one of several things. A, a lawnmower. B, a car. C, a train. Or D, a cat. <laughs> yeah. You're bound to hear one of those at any single show. And <laughs> all of those point. except for the cat is on my side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I live near a t- train track. We live close to the road and people just randomly do their lawns. Uh, and don't forget the dog barking. Oh yeah. The dog, my dog, barks. my dog likes barking. Yeah. So. Yeah. Two animals, three things of transportation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, the antichrist episode was a pretty serious one. So was the hell one. Not, they are serious uh, topics, but after that, me and Eric are like, wow, you know what? We're getting really serious, and even though everything we talk about is of a serious nature, especially when you apply biblical uh, scripture to it, but if all we do is nothing but serious, then what's the point of having a show? Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with seriousness, guys. No. Um I listen to NPR every morning and afternoon. I don't even listen to music anymore, really. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why. I, actually, I do know why. <laughs> this is going to be awkward, but I'm going to expose myself a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. This oh, is a, I didn't. This is, I a did. fa- this is a family show, man. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, let's get it. <laughs> rephrase <laughs> there I'm you. going to express myself a little bit um, music makes me sad the majority of it does yeah even that is bringing a tear to my eye what about this one no walls, no walls, 
swimming in the ocean, causing a commotion, because they are so awesome. Actually, you know, the song is catchy, but every time it plays, I get this image of three Norwals swimming on TV. And it's like, oh my gosh, stop. It's like pink and blue and <laughs> some t- t- darn commercial. <laughs> it's like a clown threw up in my mind. <laughs> that That's rather disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so anyways, you don't like music. Yeah, so I don't I don't really listen to music that much because actually a lot of it makes me kind of sad. And it's, it has nothing to do with lyrics half the time. It's the beat of the music, if you will. It, a lot of music has that slow kind of, you know, really blues type of tone to it. You know, it's just really mellow, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and I prefer more the, the, the heavier rock, something that gets you like about moving your head a bit and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, I don't know why. It's just like the... That other stuff just kind of makes me depressed. Even if it's a happy song, it makes me depressed. Now, I'll tell you, there's a ton of Jesus songs that are, that you know are really good, but just the fact that they're all slower in nature kind of depressed me. So I listen to NPR a lot, which is good because I don't read the news and I don't watch the news or anything like that. So it's probably a good thing to hear what's going on in the world. But um, I'm trying to find out where, where I'm where I'm bringing this to. Oh, serious seriousness guys it's okay uh i mean unless you're the joker obviously (laughs) there there there's a line (laughs) for not being serious or being serious you know what i mean uh i'm not sure we know what you mean well because he always says like why so serious and it's like if the joker's asking you why you're so serious why so serious exactly (laughs) And we all know how crazy he is. Yeah. So I don't know why, what I'm talking about. <laughs> Too much water, man. There's something in this water, I think. They're coming after me. Well, we are from Cleveland. The water is probably <laughs> painted pretty badly. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, there's nothing wrong with seriousness. We, uh, the one thing that Justin and I don't like about seriousness is it kind of, it's not as fun for us, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, some of our shows, and actually almost in all of our shows, there is a sense of seriousness. Whether it's a certain view that we have on a particular topic or scripture time, other than last week. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there, there there is always moments of seriousness in our shows, but we do like to have that fun, uh, lightheartedness going on throughout the episode. Um, just cause you have to break up the seriousness a little bit. In, yeah, in we don't opinion. I think Seri- seriousness is good, but y- you know, it's got to be at the right time. Yeah. So that's just our opinion because you know, Paratooth Radio likes giving their opinion on everything. It's the norm now. <laughs> it is. All right. So next clip here, guys, because I'm going to save the longest one for last, and that one is from our demons episode with. Uh, Heidi and Scott Linden from Talk Supernatural. This one is from last week. Uh, We were starting the recording, and Eric actually just pointed this out during break. So I wanted to get one that he was actually familiar with so that way he knows what's coming. (laughs) That will glorify the Lord and help people in distress. Boom. <laughs> oh. First first time got it knocked out yeah. right away. Yep, no no editing. That's good. So I'll do that uh what should I call it? <laughs> So basically what happened there is you know at the beginning, folks, of every show we have the little uh it's either a definition or a small um uh, introduction to the show, and then after that introduction it says, Now Paratooth presents whatever it is. Well, <clears throat> Literally, every single time I, I do the introduction, for those of you who don't know and haven't noticed, um, I stumble a lot, <laughs> like a lot. And so that particular clip was actually the first time I made it through an entire intro without stumbling or stopping or, you know, messing up or whatever like that. So I was pretty thrilled with myself, I'll be honest. Um, I was psyched. Yeah, me too, because I'm the one that gets to edit all of that. Yeah. Uh, which is why he said, yay, no editing. <laughs> yeah. 
be so fluffy, I'm gonna die. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I mean, don't die, but. <laughs> Not the goat. Yeah, the goat. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. <clears throat> no! And on that note, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to take our second and final break. So stay tuned and listen to Justin's Paranormal Headline. And now, Paratruth Radio's Paranormal Headline. Hey, Parafans. Justin here with your Paranormal Headlines. These headlines are from unexplainedmysteries.com. Is the Loch Ness Monster a giant catfish? Nessie hunter Steve Feltham now believes that the enigmatic creature might not be quite what it seems. The 52-year-old is himself something of a legend in cryptozoological circles, having spent the last 24 years searching for signs of the elusive and world-famous lake monster. Despite having once been a firm believer in the creature's existence, however, Feltham claims that he has now come to the realization that the Loch Ness Monster is likely to be nothing more than a Wells catfish, a large animal in its own right which can grow up to 13 feet long. It is known they were introduced into English lakes by the Victorians for sport, he said. They are very long-lived, and it is entirely possible they were introduced by Victorians to the lock, which would explain why the main sightings really started in the 1930s, just as the animals were reaching maturity. I've had to change my mind slowly over time, but what a lot of people have reported seeing would fit in with the description of the catfish with its long, curved back. Feltham famously gave up his life back in England to move to Scotland, where his ongoing hunt for the legendary beast earned him a place in the Guinness Book of World Records. He now lives in a mobile home that is permanently parked on the loch's northern end. If you have a dream, no matter how harebrained others think it is, then it is worth trying to make it come true. I'm living proof that it might just work, he wrote on his website. Have I ever regretted my decision? Never, not for one second. Ghostly face appears in museum photograph. Amateur ghost hunters have captured an image of what looks like a shadowy woman's face in Torquay Museum. The group had been investigating the building, which dates back... 140 years as part of a special night at the museum event which had been organized to look for evidence of paranormal activity. When they got together later to review the pictures they had taken, they were surprised to discover a ghostly face peering out from the level of the floorboards in one of the photographs. It appears to be a woman, and from the angle of the photograph, it looks like she is submerged into the floor, almost like she is below floor level, said staff member Carl Smith. It's a pretty clear photograph, and there was no one else present when the photo was taken, so we are at a loss to explain it. It is a bit of a mystery, and there seems to be no other explanation. The peculiar image was captured in the museum's old farmhouse section, which is home to a collection of farm equipment and a chair that dates back over 300 years. All of the furniture and equipment has had a lot of human interaction, and maybe this is where the energy has come from, said Smith. The group are now planning to return for another night to see if they can capture anything else. And this has been Justin with your Paranormal Headlines. This was a segment of Parachute Radio's Paranormal Headlines. All 
All right, go ahead. Bring us back in. <clears throat> All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And you are listening to Parachute Radio, the Para Bloopers. <laughs> what? We got to scoop the bloop. Hey, you got to do what you got to do, man. You got to keep it clean. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> as you all know, we were discussing a couple of things before break. Uh, one of those things was the seriousness uh, in, in which we take the show on occasion and also the lightheartedness of it as well. We also discussed a number of other things. Actually, we didn't. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> there, you have to cut that part out. No, it's uh, a blooper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> um, well, yeah. And, you know, Eric had said, you know, seriousness isn't a bad thing, and it's not. Uh, there's a lot of people that do serious shows, and they're they're just as good shows. But uh, me and Eric like to break up the seriousness, seriousness see, blooper, so mm-hmm. to speak, Um so that way that uh, it's not always so serious. Uh, Eric, Eric always has scripture at the end of the show most of the time, and that that's serious, except for last episode where I, I completely messed up the seriousness of scripture time. Oh, sir. <laughs> but uh, so, uh, yeah, just to show you guys what kind of goes into a show, uh, we're, we're breaking up the seriousness. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have one last clip for you guys, uh, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll finish out the show for you. This last clip is from our demons episode with Scott and Heidi Linden from Talk Supernatural. Uh, we were having some some difficulties with that show, and uh, we'll we'll have you have a listen here. Hello. Yeah, moving. I know, but it's... Calm, calm. Yay! Hello. Yeah, moving. I know, but it's so cool. How are you guys doing tonight? Why are we micing? Oh, we're just blinking. We're micing. Maybe they can't hear us. Mm-hmm. Can you guys hear us? Hello? Hello? <clears throat> oh, of course, the neighbors next door are going to be loud. Heidi Scott, you there? So that was uh, a little bit of a blooper just because Heidi says, yay, it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so j- we just wanted to bring these out to you guys because it- it's... One of those things that uh, you know you, you never hear the the uh, the outtakes or or the bloopers or you hear a crisp clean show every show and we wanted to just kind of show you guys that right <clears throat> it's really crazy because like you know it, it does sound like every every single show has you know has everything worked out you know and of course if we go live which we have been live in the past and we have done live shows and will do live shows in the future. In fact, we have one coming up soon this September. We're going to be doing a live show from Scarefest. Yep. And of course we're going to have mess ups where we're going to have bloopers right there on live air because we can't go back and edit, but it's okay. You know, I I think when we're purposely doing a live show, there's a certain type of concentration that makes it, a little smoother than normal, you know, where like when we're doing a recorded show in our mind, it's like, Oh, well it's okay if we mess up because we can just edit it, edit out everything that's messed up, you know? And, 
I think in a sense, that's kind of why we end up getting so many bloopers and why any radio show probably gets so many uh, bloopers or having to re doing retakes or whatever, you know, and yeah. it's some of the most professional radio shows out there that, that have bloopers, you know, and screw up. And you see the same thing in t- television and movies and even live television. You know, the majority of live television is broadcast five to ten minutes later uh, worldwide than it is actually being shot. Uh, and that's because if there's any uh, mess up whatsoever, whether it's like a wardrobe malfunction or somebody swearing or something like that, they're able to throw a cursor on it or they're able to, you know, throw a bleep up there so that you don't hear the, the bad word. And it's like, well, wait, how, if this is live, how do they do that? Well, it's because they're broadcasting uh, about five to 10 minutes later than the actual live event. And so it gives them a time to edit real quick and, you know, play something in there so that it can remain being a family friendly show and whatnot. So it's one of my favorite movies growing up. (laughs) 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 But yeah, so that's pretty much the blooper show for the day, guys. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Yep. Um, Justin, is there anything you want to share in regards to future events or the such? Yep. Actually, next week, uh, we are going to be having on Jeff Kinley, uh, author of As It Was in the Days of Noah. And a uh, week after that, we are going to be doing a show on the Echidna, which is from Greek mythology. So stay tuned for those episodes. Also, if you guys didn't get a chance to yet, go back and listen to uh, Paratruth, the S-Files, so that uh, you guys can kind of hear the breakdown of Eric and I's old show, Night Stalkers, where our minds were then, where they are now, and if they differ, and if they do differ, what's different? Right. And uh, <clears throat> I think it's really cool because it is something. Now, this is something that we've discussed, you know, whether or not to go back to Night Stalkers and not in, not to what Night Stalkers used to be, but just truly, you know, dip pick and, and like pull apart. And, and what's cool about this is you're going to be able to see and get an idea of who we once were and what our beliefs were and how they've changed over the past five or six years, uh, either based on how we've matured. Um, or just give you a sense of what salvation does, you know, yeah. uh, when, when you come face to face with Jesus Christ. And it's going to show you a big difference in our views and our opinions and so on and so forth. If you haven't seen it and if you have seen it, then you already know what I'm talking about. And I think you, can, you get the gist of it. But uh, we're going to be doing these S file episodes once a month. And it's just something a little special at the end of each month. So definitely look forward to that. Keep it in mind, and we will always be posting it on on the media, you know, everywhere, yeah. so everyone can see it. So, yeah. well, and uh, I do believe we have a real quick revealed update for you guys as well. Real quick, I just want to thank. There, there's a few people um, that donated to the revealed. I'm not going to give the names out right now. Just gonna, just make it quick. Everyone who donated, thank you so much for your donation. I appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Uh, it's really going to help the film become what I think it can become. And with God leading us, I'm sure it's going to have an impact on the world. Uh, also, for anyone who's interested in donating, or if you'd like to just know more about The Revealed, check out paratruthradio.com. Go to the Creative Works tab. And there you'll see the revealed the uh, basically it's the 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 poster, if you will, for the revealed. And underneath it's the synopsis. It tells you all about the movie. At the very bottom of the page, it's a GoFundMe uh, link. You click on that. You can learn even more about the revealed, a little bit about myself, and if you feel the urge to to donate, which would be wonderful. Please do so. There are a number of perks on the GoFundMe page, uh, and it ranges anything from like a pen to a DVD to even an executive producer credit on the film itself. And the DVD, of course, is going to be the DVD of the film. So uh, please check those out. You know, if you're interested, even a dollar. You don't get anything for a dollar, I'll be honest, but a dollar would be a wonderful, wonderful blessing for me and my crew uh, to make this film. And uh, 
just let everyone know, you know, if you're interested in donating, you know, you are welcome to donate personally. Just email us at paratruthradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, you know, go to GoFundMe page. You'll only get the perks at the GoFundMe page. If you donate personally, you don't really get the perks. I'm sorry. It's just the way it's going to work. Um, of course, if you donate personally and you're interested in a perk and you want to just be like, hey, I know about this perk here. If I give you this, can I get this? There's a good chance that I'll uh, definitely give you that. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, there are ways around it. You can get a perk. You just got to bring it up to me if you donate personally. So anyway, that's all I got for the revealed. Please help out if you're interested. Check out the synopsis. Also, like the Facebook page, facebook.com uh, forward slash or Facebook. Is that right? Facebook. Yeah. Facebook.com forward geez, slash forward slash the revealed movie. And uh, also, you know, again, just look forward to to the 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 updates in the future, both on the show and on Facebook. And as we said at the beginning, Eric starts filming soon and mm-hmm. uh, he's going back in about a week or so uh, to to get started on that. So definitely, guys, come and uh, support Eric in, in this endeavor. I am looking forward to the movie, so I want to see it completed. And uh, the only way to do that, unfortunately, guys, is with money. So next mm-hmm. week, we got a great guest for you. We got a lot of stuff coming up for you guys. And on that note, uh, we will see you guys next week. Same time, same channel. I'm Justin. And I'm Eric. Peace. If you enjoyed this episode of Paratruth Radio, and you would like to listen to it again, or are interested in listening to any of our past episodes, then you can listen to them on HD at our website, paratruthradio.com. And you can also find us at Stitcher, Blueberry, TuneIn, iTunes, Spreaker, and YouTube. And of course, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for brand new updates of our show every day.